Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum Doktor. Um, everyone seeing berapa orang dalam group you? Kita ada sembilan orang. Ya. Yeah. Sumset macam semua orang dah ada dah. Sembilan. Uh, Alright, just alert dia orang. Okay. So, Uh, boleh start ya Dr. Boleh start ya. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, my patient, uh, Nur Ambar Trisha, an 8 years old Malaysia, was presented to emergency department uh, of HCAA with history of fever for three weeks and uh, three weeks duration and joint pain for two days uh, duration. Uh, According to the mother, uh, the fever was uh, high in the evening and sometimes uh, early in the morning. And the fever was relieved uh, temporarily by syrup uh, paracetamol given by the mother. Uh, she also developed rashes on the same day of the fever. Uh, the rashes was palpable and erythematous with no discharge. Uh, the rashes uh, were noted at the lower limb, abdomen and also at her chest. However, uh, she doesn't notice when uh, the rashes started. She also developed a sore throat uh, the same day as the fever, but she denied any difficulty uh, or pain during swallowing. Uh, she also developed uh, red eyes on both eyes for three days uh, during the fever and it resolved spontaneously. And there was no discharge and also blurry of vision noted. Her mother claimed that uh, she became less active and lost uh, appetite. Uh, five days after the symptoms started, uh, she been brought to HTAA and admitted to the hospital for one week. Uh, she was diagnosed with macular popular azanthema, secondary to mycoplasma infection as uh, mycoplasma pneumonia test was positive. Uh, she been prescribed with clarithromycin uh, and then uh, she also need to complete uh, seven days of clarithromycin at home. Uh, upon discharge, uh, the fever and the rashes are still present. Uh, the nature of the fever was the same and the rashes were more prominent at the anterior chest. Uh, at home, uh, she started to develop uh, multiple joint pain uh, two days prior to the current admission. Uh, the pain first started at the left knee and migrated to her left elbow and hip. And left hip. Uh, it was worsened upon walking, but she's still able to ambulate her leg. Uh, she also noticed uh, she have a stiffness of the joint, especially when walking up in the morning. However, uh, there was no redness, swelling, uh, swelling, deformity and discharge noted. Uh, upon further questioning, uh, she did not any history of ulcer in the mouth or dry mouth. She also, um, uh, there, there was also no history of trauma, neck swelling, uh, vomiting, coughing, dyspnea, uh, edema or loss of weight. She also denied any history any changes in the urine or any bleeding tendency or bruises. Uh, there were also no history of recent traveling, water activity and fogging in the neighborhood. Uh, due to that, uh, her family brought her to the emergency department. For the systemic review, uh, for the general, uh, there are fever, sore throat, red eyes and macular popular rash uh, noted. There are also loss of weight, but there are no loose, uh, there are loss of appetite, but not but there are no loose of weight. Uh, in, in musculoskeletal system, there are multiple joint pain and joint stiffness, but there was no joint deformity or muscle weakness. Uh, cardiovascular, uh, there was no chest pain, no palpitation. Respiratory, there was no dyspnea, runny nose, coughing, wheezy, or hemoptysis. For uh, GI system, there are no abdominal pain, adara, hematemesis, or malina. And for the genital urinary, there was no dysuria, hematuria, faulty urine, or uh, increase in frequency. For the neurology, there was no fainting, seizure, headache, dizziness, muscle weakness, or numbness. And for hematology, uh, there was no bleeding tendency, gum bleeding, epitaxis of easy bruising.
uh, for the past medical and surgical history. She had no known of medical illness. Uh, there was no history of uh, hospitalization before, besides the first one due to the macular popular uh, azentema, secondary to mycoplasma infection. Uh, for drug and food allergy, she had no food and drug history. Uh, for the first hospitalization, she'd been prescribed with clarithromycin. For the birth history, uh, for the antenatal, the mother was well and healthy. She also attended all the screening for interpartum. Uh, Nurai was delivered at 38 weeks via spontaneous contact delivery and uh, The birth weight was 3.2 kilograms and it was uneventful. For the postnatal, uh, she's developed down this for one week but not required any hospitalization. For the nutritional history, uh, she'd been exclusively, exclusively breastfeed uh, for five months and started on formula mix since then. Uh, she started weaning at the age of six months with, blind, with blended rice and chicken with vegetables. She now on adult diet. She eats three times per day with a uh, compost of rice, protein, and vegetables. She also able to finish a full plate uh, each time. And so she is not a picky eater. Uh, for the developmental history, she is currently standard two as SK, Kuantan, SK Pandan Kuantan. She has no problem in her studying. She also enjoys being with her friends. She doesn't have any uh, problems communicating and have a well-developed speech. She also able to express her emotion and she also uh, can dress and groom by herself. For the immunization history, she completed her vaccination up to her age. For the family history, uh, her mother is 39 years old while her father is 43 years old. Ryan is the third child out of four siblings. Uh, there are no history of medical illness in the family. The mother also did not any history of a rheumatological disease in the family, such as systemic lupus erythematis or rheumatoid arthritis. And her sibling does not experience uh, the same symptoms. For the social history, uh, she lived at the single story house at Taman Tasquantan with complete basic amenities. Uh, she lived with her parents and siblings. Her parents is a businessman and woman with monthly income of 6,000 ringgit per month. Uh, next, we move on to the physical examination. Uh, the physical examination was done at the second day of admission. Uh, for the general examination, uh, the no eye was uh, cautious and alert. She was not in a respiratory distress. There was no pallor and jaundice noted. There was no swelling noted at the neck. Uh, there was a salmon flashlight rash at her anterior chest. No rash noted at, uh, at, the, at the part of the body. Uh, Ferrofer examination shows no clubbing, cyanosis, bruises. There was also uh, no nail pitting. Uh, BCG scar was noted at the upper left arm. Uh, vital signs, uh, the temperature was 37.5 degrees Celsius. Pulse rate was 120 beats per minute. Respiratory rate was 19 breaths per minute. Blood pressure was 112 over 76 millimeter mercury. And SpO2 was 97% um, under room air. Anthropathic measurement, uh, her weight was 30 kg, between 75 to 90, 90 centile, and her height was 130 centimeter, between 50 to 75 centile. On a joint examination, uh, on inspection, the joint was not arithmetic or swelling. There was no joint deformity noted. Uh, on a palpitation, there was a tenderness noted when moving both uh, left knee and hip. Uh, patella tech was negative, but uh, other joint was normal. For the cardiovascular examination, uh, on inspection, uh, there was no scar, rashes, or visible procession. Uh, for patient, apex view was palpable at the fifth intercostal space in, in mid clavicular line be below the nipple. Uh, three and parasitic were not detected uh, on aspiration. Uh, second and first sound was heard, no additional sound was heard. Respiratory examination, uh, inspection, the chest moves uh, symmetrically, bilaterally, there was no scar at the chest, no chest deformity, no sign of respiratory distress, uh, palpitation, also chest expansion was equal on both sides, trachea was centrally located, uh, tactile parameters is equal on both sides, and uh, on expectation, vascular breast sound was heard, uh, there was no capitation or ronchi heard. On abdominal examination, uh, the abdomen was not distended most symmetrically with respiration. Embodicus was centrally located and inverted. No scar, no dilated vein. Uh, Opposition noted. For patient, the adrenal was soft, non tender, no gardenal rigidity. The kidneys were not palatable and no hepatosplenomegaly. Bowel sound was heard. For the neurological examination, 
patient was conscious and alert, no abdominal posture or any limb deformities noted, no muscle wasting or fasciculation, no neck stiffness, and the uh, deep tender reflex was normal and baby skin sign is negative. And for summary, uh, my patient, Nur and Patricia, an eight years old male girl, presented to the emergency department due to sudden onset of fever, high grade fever for three weeks duration and associated witches and rigors. Uh, she developed macular papillary. Macular popular rash at her lower limb, chest, and abdomen. She also experiencing sore throat and red eyes for three days and results spontaneously. She be admitted for one week after seeking medical attention due to the macular popular azenthema, secondary to mycoplasma pneumonia, and being prescribed with chlorothromycin. Upon discharge, uh, the rash and fever did not resolve, and the rashes are more prominent at the anterior chest. And she's been experiencing joint pain at the left elbow, hip, and knee joint. She also developed joint stiffness mostly on the morning. Uh, should should I continue with uh provisional diagnosis? Yeah, yeah, continue. What, what is your what is your provisional diagnosis? So okay. Uh, okay. Uh, my differential diagnosis is uh systemic onset uh, juvenile idiopathic uh, arthritis. Uh, actually, it is actually due to uh because the patient have a high grade fever, sore throat, uh, red eyes. Uh, maybe uveitis, arthritis, uh, also joint tenderness, have multiple joint pain, uh, and also she has uh, morning joint stiffness, a restricted joint movement, and also have a macular popular rashes uh, involving the trunk and the chest, we also have malaise, uh, loss of weight, and also uh, uh, Loss of appetite and also mostly uh, this uh, systemic onset happen on the child usually uh, on uh, one to ten years old. Uh, but there are points again, which is there are no joint swelling, no adenopathy, no spinomegaly. As seventy percent of the uh, of this disease, they will have spinomegaly. There are no rheumatoid nodule noted, and there also no nail pitting. Okay. For my differential diagnosis. Okay, for, 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 for my differential diagnosis, uh, there are acute rheumatoid fever, reactive arthritis, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, Kawasaki disease, and also Lyme disease. Um, okay, uh, for acute rheumatoid fever. Okay. Yes, Dr. Uh, the... Joint pain just now is uh, is uh, only at two side, right? And then the at the at the left knee, left elbow, and also at the left hip. All right. Okay. Okay. And uh, actually, there's no okay. swelling. Eh? You said just now there's no swelling, right? Uh, there are no swelling. Okay. Only pain and stiffness. Okay. So I I I mean. True, but I, I, what, what do you think? What, what the, based on the history, right? Quite short, this no yes. Your opinion, what would be the best uh, diagnosis for this child? Do you agree it's actually uh, the perfect urine arthritis based on your story, based on the history? Do you agree with the, the top um, that differential as a uh, idiopathic urinary arthritis? Do you, do you agree with it? That would be the, the top provisional. Mm. I think uh, it was. It was. Uh, the symptoms are. Uh, the symptoms was, are. Uh, it's a preceding event of an infection. It's quite clear. All right. Preceding event of infection. Yes. It's quite short. And then actually, there's no other systemic symptoms. Okay. So, in this situation, uh, I believe the reactive arthritis is actually the the best uh, uh, infection instead of. Uh, because there's no history, child is very young. Uh, but we're gonna have to follow up this child. So any any uh okay, what, what about the investigation? You want to share the investigation? Okay. Mm, okay. 
For the investigation, uh, we do a full blood count. Uh, there was increase in total white blood cells, shows the sign of infection. Uh, the CRP also was increased, uh, showed the sign of inflammation. And also for the renal function test and liver function test, it was normal. Uh, blood culture shows no, uh, inf no growth. Uh, for the anti-nuclear antibody, was negative. Uh, and then for rheumatoid factor, also negative. Uh, for the serum complement level, it was raised uh, for the C3, uh, but the C4 was normal. Uh, my suggest uh, the IA. Uh, for the microplasma culture test, it was positive. Uh, and then uh, for the joint x it was uh, not yet done in this patient. Uh, but uh, I want to ask Dr. Uh, if the micro... Okay. Uh, as you see just now, the reactive uh, arthritis are the most, um, yeah. the most, uh, I can the most, but uh, uh, even to uh, the, can, can, can microplasma infection uh, lead to this reactive arthritis? Yeah, actually the, the, the reactive arthritis or we call it uh, uh, poly, poly, polyarthralgia, uh, reactive polyarthralgia. Uh, any forms of infection, viral, bacterial, uh, mm. even, uh, and causing these uh, features, you call it a reactive arthritis. Uh, okay? um, and not just mycoplasma, basically mm. any form of infection, uh, um, viral or bacterial can uh, cause this. Okay? Second, second uh, differential that I would actually uh, suggest is whether this child has septic arthritis or osteomyelitis but uh, again when the child presented there's no we were usually for uh, septic arthritis or osteomyelitis they have a high sparking temperature and immobility so this actually the uh, like the mycoplasma can um, uh, this actually very uh, common question uh, for uh, um, what you call this uh, for uh, uh, multiple choice a short uh, answer Mycoplasma because it actually can be manifested by many many condition. Okay, if um, no, I, we, we didn't see the rash, right? But typically, uh, rash of uh, mycoplasma we call it uh, erythema multiforme minor. Okay, so uh, we, we didn't see the the, the uh, features of the rash. So erythema multiforme minor, and of course, it's all these uh, type of uh, reactive arthritis. Not just uh, pneumonia. It's actually it can cause hemolytic anemia. You look again the the uh, any uh, HB result of the uh, have you got the result of the FBC just now? What the HB like? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, and, uh, uh, just now uh, for the rashes. Uh, right. this, this, this. Okay, uh, Dr. Fodorashes, does it the same as arthritis dermatitis syndrome? Uh, no, uh, it's different. It's actually... But, uh, uh, no. No, it's a feature of uh, what we call this, uh, certain infection or certain uh, condition can be presented with erythema multiforme major or minor. And you probably can have a look at uh, what, what is the uh, feature. It's actually like uh, a target uh, cell or like, you know, uh, uh, what you call this? Uh, when you're drawing, uh, when you uh, you take up the archery uh, program, right? That the target is what you call the erythema multiforme minor or major. Okay, so that will be the case. And this complement C3 risk is not specific and not sensitive for uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Huh? Actually, uh, uh, any forms of uh, C3 complement is actually uh, complement level is actually our immuno. Uh, uh, Modulator, okay. Even example in, but it is more more useful in condition like uh, acute glomerulonephritis. Uh, there is a kind of more specific, but the C three and C four is not uh, only uh, specific uh, because it's a complement. Complement uh, is uh, actually in our uh, system. It's not specific for for uh, arthritis. EJIE it's not even. Not even uh, what you call this uh, uh, classical teacher. Okay. Okay. All right.
So in this situation, what what what, what is the um, other than okay? So at your situation, you three, you you three, right? Yes, you three. Okay. So uh, yes, it's the history. The history is good. Okay, quite quite uh, clear. Again, please uh, uh, the, the the way that the history is presented is quite clear. Uh, especially fever. I think the uh, whenever uh, you have a, a history of a fever, you're gonna have to take as detail as that. Eh? So when you talk about fever, you have to know the onset, the progression, duration. Okay, uh, what actually uh, um, can anything reduce the fever? What make it worse? Again, history of traveling, all these are very important. Eh? So other condition like leptospirosis, everything eh? also can cause uh, like this non specific uh, polyarthritis. Mm. Okay, quite quite clear. Okay. Uh, Sorry, just now the, the, the rushes was uh, the way that you discuss is now is a palpable and erythema. Okay, this is what we, we, we call it erythema multiforme. Okay, or erythema nodosum. Okay, so uh, this, uh, you please uh, just quickly Google up uh, later about erythema multiforme, major and minor, and uh, you have a look what, what is it like. The whole thing, uh, the one is okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel sad. Most of the uh, this uh, item of money for me. Uh, okay, what uh, in, in this situation, what uh, what is the principle of management? How do you think that uh, is the uh, management? Um, just a principle, you don't have to uh, detail. Uh, should, should we give uh, antibiotics? All right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, because, uh, okay. Like, like, uh, when, 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 Microlite. Yes, very good. Microlites. Huh? So, example of microlites hmm, that you know. Kena tahu ni tahu jangan. Erythromycin. Erythromycin, very good one. Number two. Azithromycin. Azithromycin, and this patient is on. And that one, this patient is on what? Just now. Zetalat, zetalat. Ah. Patient is a uh, no before before this uh, current patient. Patient is on uh, clarithromycin. Okay, patient is on this patient was on clarithromycin um at the first admission. Hey, presenter, presenter. Um. This patient was on clarithromycin. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Alright. Uh, okay, so what other? I I know I know. What other use of a clarithromycin yang you pernah yang tahu? Kebetulan tanya kita ni ya, pharmacology penting. Tahu tak? Anyone? Erythromycin. What other condition kita pakai? Tahu tak? Pernah dengar triple therapy? Ah, pernah dengar triple therapy? Espiroide. Ah, ya, espiroide eradication. Eh? So, erythromycin is used for uh, espiroide eradication. Okay, that's the principle of treatment. Um, Okay, go back to the provisional that is uh, sorry, the, the differential diagnosis. Okay, all right. So uh, quickly, all right. So uh, acute rheumatic fever uh, is a migrating, migrating, migrating polyarthritis. Okay. All right. So if only yeah. uh, arthralgia, you need a. Uh, to know about the minor and major classification of uh, rheumatic fever. Okay. Uh, again, once you have the, 
kena kena revise balik ni so I see but this patient unlikely lah right here practice like the SLE again this age unlikely cause such a disease does not fulfill the does not fulfill the what they call this uh, uh, criteria huh? there's a uh, five criteria of uh, Kawasaki disease so this is yes depression analysis but I think likely it's reactive arthritis to me like in this case huh? and uh, idiopathic uh, uh, this one is very rare and in children and features uh, no, no, not uh, you need uh, more follow up and uh, whether this problem will recur Lyme disease in Malaysia again uh, what is the source of Lyme disease in Malaysia in in in, in a patient? Rodents. Huh? Ticks. Tick bite from? Uh, ro uh, tick bite from uh, rodent. Rodent? Who is the rodent? Which animal not rodent? Rodent to leptospirosis. Deer lah, deer. Okay. Usually it's deer. Tahu? Oh, yes, deer. Ah, rusa. And? Nanti tak ada pergi ladang rusa, Malaysia pun tak ada rusa. Kat Wakil Mawak ada rusa, tak ada pun. So, in, in, in uh, Malaysia, yeah, I mean, if you happen to take the uh, UK exam, uh, they take the lab exam ke uh, Australian uh, exam, nak kerja sana nanti, they have to know this disease. Alright, any question from the rest about the first uh, presentation? So the, the differential diagnosis since uh, we are having this discussion and we pass you put any differential to the group and then you have to uh, revise again and try to relate this uh, condition with the uh, patient's uh, uh, diagnosis. Okay? Uh, doctor, I would like to ask, uh, as we know that GIA is diagnosis of exclusion, right? Yes. So it cannot be in a provisional diagnosis. Uh, it's not like it cannot be in the provisional analysis, but in this patient, it's less likely. Yeah? Oh, okay. It's, it's less likely. You can, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, even a rare condition, you can even put a rare condition uh, as your provisional analysis, but can you give a reasonable reason to defend why you say it's Lyme disease? And you say, you say this patient, say this patient just came back from Rocky Mountain. United States, for example, our patient is, uh, you know, uh, visited a deer farm recently, at Jalan Gambang, for example. You can back up that uh, 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 with that information. Okay, then you can even put Lyme disease as a first diagnosis, even though it's rare. Because there's a strong uh, what call this, correlation with history. In this patient, the correlation and strong history is actually yeah, patient just recently had an acute infection and then post infection, not even one month, about two weeks, patient uh, developed uh, joint pain. Right. So in medicine, it's actually common thing, it's common, uh, logically, it's logic. Uh. All right, so something like, you know, family history, you know, uh, immune disorder, child is still young, right, and all other parameters not uh, normal, and somehow with the rash, Erythema multiforme example and then the reactive arthritis post infection would be the top no? and then all the investigation are negative for SLE and also the uh, what they call this uh, idiopathic arthritis. So how how can we defend it is actually a uh, top provisional. Right. When you say provisional is kind of the best diagnosis that we have for this patient because management will then depends on the what top diagnosis that you have? Right. So that's a different. Any other any suggestion? Any other suggestion or question? Please, all this actually uh, third year exam are quite uh, common, huh? Either your single best or uh, MCQ, huh? Quite common. In a long case, if you have this patient in your long case for your end post assessment. Uh, this is also the question that we can uh, we ask you to examine the joint. Uh. And then uh, again, uh, oh, since uh, lockdown, uh, unprecedented, macam mana nak buat ni? Uh, you can quickly uh, again uh, revise either from your artisanal tailor corner ke how to do examination joint and look at the YouTube. Uh. The concept is uh, joint examination, look, feel, move, measure. Okay. 
Look feel, move, measure. So look at cari cat video, baca buku dulu, cari cat video. What is the concept of uh, looking examination of the joint? Look feel, move, measure. And kat rumah, if you stay with your apa? Uh, sekarang duduk hostel kat rumah ni ya? Eh? Jual? Hostel. Ha? Huh? Hostel lah. Betul lah yeah. Ah, Then then uh, you can actually uh, start doing your examination uh, via colleague. Alright. Now why don't you record it and then you know uh, that the uh, one of the lecture have a look at your video whether the correct the technique is uh, it's okay what else uh, you want to do so apa tu boleh post kat TikTok ke apa yeah. okay uh, join examination okay look at the video and uh, baca buku join examination look feel move measure what is it okay any question before we move to second. Okay, I continue with the second uh, division. Okay, so for a few other cattle, my name is Halifax Hamden, and I will be doing the second case. Okay, next. Okay, uh, the tip complete. Uh, for this case, is a uh, Nolaili uh, Wardia, uh, 11 year old Malaysian, uh, presented to accident and emergency department HEE due to a high grade fever for three days duration. Uh, and the cutting was done on the third day of emission. Okay, as for uh, history of presenting illness, uh, she was apparently well until one week prior to emission uh, when uh, she started to feel feverish as her hands were warm to touch. Uh, however, the temperature was not recorded at home. Uh, therefore, uh, there was no uh, associated symptoms at this time. Uh, she did not seek medical attention uh, as the symptom as was tolerable. Uh, her mother gave her paracetamol and she claimed the February symptom uh, subsided temporarily. Uh, and the symptom was on and off until the fourth day of illness. Okay, on the fifth day of illness, uh, her hand became uh, hot to touch and it was not associated with tears and rigor. And then her mother decided to bring her to clinic Kesihatan Punya. Uh, the temperature recorded at the clinic was 40 degrees Celsius and the doctor suspected uh, leptospirosis as she was eaten by rats in the house around a week ago due to presence of rodents in the neighborhood. Okay, uh, she was then referred to emergency department in HDEA on the same day and had her blood taken for the investigation, which revealed uh, normal results. Uh, thus, she was discharged and was given antiparatic. Next. Okay, after getting back home on the same day, which is the fifth day of illness, she started to have non-projectile uh, non vomiting for around 10 times. And the content of uh, the vomitus was mostly food content and sometimes watery, yellowish in color. Okay, and no blood or bilious uh, content, and it was uh, not associated with food, con uh, food intake. Uh, each time she vomits, uh, it, it was around uh, a volume of one small cup. Okay, and the high grade fever also uh, was associated with passing the stool five times per day, so, uh, chocolate in color and watery with no blood passing out. And her, uh, she also experienced uh, facial puffiness uh, at the night. Okay, next. Okay, on the sixth day of illness, uh, the fever still persists. Uh, and the frequency of uh, vomiting and passing out loose food also did not reduce. Okay, and she became very lethargic and was less active. Uh, she also had loss of appetite. Uh, there was also sudden and provoked uh, nose bleed and gum bleeding uh, on the night before admission. Uh, and the period of the bleeding was around one to two minutes and resolved uh, spontaneously. Uh, she also experienced hip and leg pain bilaterally involving the whole uh, lower limb. Uh, this causes her to uh, have limitations to walk and the pain score uh, is uh, 4 over 10. However, she did not uh, do any heavy exercise preceding the pain or experience uh, any trauma in her lower limb. She also did not take any energy to relieve the pain. Okay, next. Okay, in the morning, 
uh, on the day of uh, the admission, uh, there was no normal spontaneous bleeding. However, uh, other symptoms did not resolve at all. And she was uh, taken again by her mother to the emergency department uh, in her PA and was uh, admitted to the ward. Okay, upon further questioning, both of uh, the patient's uh, little siblings, who age uh, nine and five years old, also experienced uh, the same symptoms as her. Uh, currently, she lives in a dengue point area where uh, fogging was done twice a month. Uh, last fogging was done around two weeks ago. Yeah, otherwise, she denied having any rashes. Uh, abdominal pain, profuse as waiting, dizziness, headache, or shortness of breath. She also denied any history of traveling, uh, jungle, tr jungle trekking, swimming, or water activity. Uh, she did not experience this. She also did not do any uh, uh, garden activity or in any contact with soil, and there was no history of uh, eating outside. Okay, next. Okay, as for the systemic review, uh, for the cardiovascular system, uh, there's no shortness of breath, chest pain, or symptoms of this method. For respiratory in, uh, system, no any nose, uh, cough, or within hurt. And for the eye system, uh, there's no significant in swelling, digestion, or constipation. For genital urinary system, there's no dysuria, hematuria, or changes in urinary uh, frequency. For neurological, there's no history of dizziness or abnormal movement. Okay, next. Okay, for past medical uh, and surgical history, uh, she had um, consulectomy done at GPA at, uh, around seven years ago. Otherwise, no known medical illness. As for drug history, she was not on any medication. She claimed uh, to not have any drug allergy or food allergy. She also claimed to not. Um, use traditional treatment or taking any medication over the counter. Okay, next. For birth history, for antenatal history, uh, her mother attended all the antenatal screening and all was normal. For interpartum, uh, she was born at 37 weeks of gestation via uh, SVD and HPA, and her birth date was 3 kg. For postnatal history, the postnatal uh, was an event here. Next, for immunization history, uh, she uh, already complete, completed her immunization, course up to her age uh, at Clinic Setan Kunya, and uh, no complication um, or any adverse effect from immunization being experienced. Okay, next. For nutritional history, uh, she was exclusively, uh, exclusively breastfed uh, from birth until six months of age. And she started uh, weaning at six months old with porridge, blended chicken and vegetables. Finally, she is uh, an adult diet such as rice, uh, vegetables and chicken. She will uh, normally have meals three times uh, every day. For the elementary history, um, she is a standard five student in Swala Kamasa and Sumit Samani. And she was ranked in class during her recent exam and she is uh, quite active at school and easy to communicate with, uh, with her friends. So next. For family history, okay, uh, her mother uh, is 59 years old uh, where her father is uh, 40 years old and both have a uh, medical illness and she is the eldest out of four siblings and her younger brothers is uh, nine and five uh, had similar symptoms, otherwise others are healthy and not in the study of pregnancy when in the family. Okay, next. For social history, uh, the patient currently taken care by his parents and lives in Sunan Isab. Uh, her father was as a factory worker while her mother was as receptionist with a household uh, income of around 2000 per month and their house are filled with best energies. Uh, and the nurse clinic uh, with the house is clinic with her family. Okay, next. For the physical invention, it, uh, it was done at the day of uh, admission. Okay, next. For general examination, um, the child was uh, conscious and alert, and she was thin, not, uh, not septic looking and not in the stress. 
there was no dis uh, dismal features and there's no rashes. Uh, there was uh, a cannula uh, attached on the dorsum of the left knee without any active infusion. Uh, on peripheral examination, there were no cavity, peripheral stenosis, or palm edema. Uh, the periphery was warm and the cavity time was less than two seconds. Uh, the visit scar was noted on her left shoulder and there was no cervical lymphadenopathy noted, uh, no congenital bacteria, and no stair joints. Yeah, on examination of the ear, no in good. There was no discharge from the ear. Uh, however, there was a return of epitaxis. The color of the blood uh, was fresh red, uh, which sometimes uh, comes with coated blood. Okay, otherwise, the mucous membrane was moist uh, without evidence of white coated tongue. The retrop was not injected with no enlargement of the tonsils. Okay, no oral ulcer was seen, and on examination of the feet, there was no fluid edema. Okay, next. For her vital signs, the blood pressure um, is 112 over 68 millimeter mercury, which is normal. For heart rate, it's 106 beats per minute, which is normal. For respiratory rate, it's 24 breaths per minute, which is normal. For temperature, the, uh, during the uh, day, is 37 degrees Celsius, which is ever dry. Uh, and SPO2 is 99%, which is normal. As for anthropometric measurement, yeah, her weight now is currently 50.3 kg and her height is uh, 146 cm. Okay, for respiratory examination, yeah, uh, on inspection, there's no scars noted. The chest most symmetrically with uh, respiration. Uh, no chest wall deformity, uh, no cervical scar or directed vein scene. Yeah, on uh, palpation, the trachea was essentially located. Uh, the chest expansion was unequal um, bilaterally. The cover perpendiculars was normal bilaterally. On percussion, resonance at all zone with no dullness. Yeah, on aspiration, there is uh, equal A and T on both sides of the lungs. The scular base sound was set with the wrong type or percussions. Uh, for uh, abdomen examination, okay, on inspection, the abdomen was not distended and most naturally with respiration. The abdomen was central and inverted, and no specific scars noted. On superficial palpation, abdomen was soft and tender. On the palpation, no mass found. Liver and skin were not upper brain. The both kidneys were not upper brain. Open percussion, there was no shaking dullness. Uh, on application, the was sound was there. Okay, next. For cardiovascular examination, okay, on inspection of the pericardium, uh, there was no chest deformity, physical scar, or physical pulsation. On palpation, uh, the apex speed was at the fifth uh, left because the space at the middle of the line, there was no trail or pyrostomacy. On application, the first and second uh, sounds were heard with no moment. Okay, next. As for neurological examination, the glass cell from uh, core muscle was uh, 15 of 15, and there was no scar, muscle wasting, uh, inverted movement, perspiration, sportema was not noted, and then um, tone for all the were normal, muscle power was good, reflex were normal at all means, for perception and sensory were all intact. Okay, next. Okay, for the summary for this uh, case, the my patient, uh, no lady, uh, the 11 year old little girl who, with no known mental illness, was presented to the accident and emergency department with CE uh, due to high grade fever for three days duration, uh, which is associated with persistent vomiting and passing out loose stool, as well as patient puffiness, followed by uh, developing some spontaneous mucous breathing on the night before emission. Uh, okay, uh, for uh, physical examination, uh, reveal evidence of epitaxis. Uh, others are unremarkable. Okay, next. Okay, my uh, professional diagnosis is uh, dengue fever in febrile phase uh, with morning signs. Okay. The points for because uh, the patient have high grade fever for three days duration. And she also have persistent vomiting in the area. 
she also have a spontaneous nasal breathing uh, as so uh, facial puffiness she also uh, experienced lethargy uh, lower limb pain and and she is in dengue prone area and the last working was done uh, two weeks ago as for point again uh, she does not have uh, no rash and not the pain but she was bitten by red uh, around two weeks ago uh, notice and uh, reward next as for my differential analysis is uh leptospirosis acute gastroenterity typhoid fever and malaria okay she was a woke up okay um and uh, in investigation in Yeah, first is uh, the full blood count. The blood count for this patient. And uh, next, so it shows. Uh, and yeah, what's the result of this? Okay, all right. Okay, the next, uh, yeah, the total white blood cell is low and also okay. um, low in trophy as well. Are you in Uh, I did with next. Then D. Uh, okay, then we have to come this. Okay, for this patient, uh, the only go, uh, uh, minus one. Minus one is for the case. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, test. Okay, other than that, next, she also, next. Yeah. Okay, she also then. You will find your test, you know, profile. Uh, as for your know, profile, also you find your test, both uh, shows normal. Mm. Okay, always remember, uh, renal profile, uh, when you want to do renal profile, it's not to look for dehydration. Always uh, the answer is wrong answer. Mm -hmm. and how do you assess dehydration? How do you assess dehydration? Mm -hmm. Clinical, yeah. You assess dehydration through clinical dehydration. Okay, all the features of the dehydration: skin tender, okay, separate refill time, sunken eyes, and the point now. That is actually the features of uh, dehydration. So, in your profile, mm -hmm. it's actually you want to look at the electrolytes and then okay. Uh, don't don't say that you want to look for dehydration. You can't look for dehydration. You use full blood count. Ah, uh, hematocrit. Elevated hematocrit may suggest an infection. Betul -betul mm -hmm. lah. Tapi we should not look for the registration is clinical. Okay, uh, continue. Uh, okay. This is, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think we should do a coagulation profile? Mm -hmm. I think. No, because this patient, the baby is not very severe. Yes, okay. Number, number one. Number two is actually if patient presented with a, a bruises, a bruises and ecchymosis, then we shall mm -hmm. indicate say, or oh, very prolonged bleeding. It's not a prolonged, it's just epistasis. Okay, okay, we start from the beginning. Sorry, uh, I just want to uh, give the finishing process. Uh, first slide. All right, okay, very good. So uh, again, uh, common thing is common. Okay, common thing. So I just want to look at the, uh, what we call the thinking process. Next slide. All right. So again, you start with this uh, fever. Okay, these are all correct. No problem. But uh, again, uh, then uh, child has been beaten. Mm. Does a red bite causes leptospirosis? Um, no. No. No, it does not cause leptospirosis. Yeah, it's just no, no. red urine, right? Mm -mm. So, uh, uh, the thinking if you are here, uh, not to say that uh, uh, what this is wrong, but the suspicion is must be very clear. Mm. So, what is actually if it's a red bite? Huh? It cause what? Red spot fever, RBF, red spot fever. Okay, red spot fever can present with uh, this uh, fever, 
uh, with Maya Ja, right? What like what you presenting is actually the child uh, can have a red blood fever. That should be a, a, a another provisional diagnosis. Okay, all the features that shares including the in vomiting and uh, direct is actually a features of a red blood fever. Except no rashes lah, but rashes usually very common in red blood fever as dengue mm -hmm. presented with rash. So the provisional that one is actually red blood fever, not the sclerosis lah. So the sclerosis usually where they play at the river, play at the uh, waterfall, then or not to say, uh, say the rodent infestation at home, but the rodent uh, urinate at, at home lah, and dekat dalam dia punya, what you call this in kitchen, right? Uh, not content lah. Uh. Sebab tu kalau you beli apa, air tin daripada 7-Eleven ke apa ke, try to pasal dulu tu, tak tahu penting kat store you can minum red urine and then it can cause the sclerosis okay so this is a common now next uh, slide okay so when patient presented with vomiting your thinking must be very clear any non pointer vomiting is is it infection is it an uh, mechanical problem causing surgery to your concern right but the patient has uh, if vomiting we are more concerned vomiting but no loose stool we concern whether it's a surgical problem. Eh? It can be uh, intersusception, it can be mechanical obstruction. But in this situation, patient has a diarrhea many times. Then uh, likely it is actually some form of a intestinal infection. Okay, next. Then patient, uh, lethargic, less active, why? For a lot of vomiting, interesting. A lot of vomiting, does the patient loss of electrolyte? Lethargic less active is it because of fever of the illnesses? Alright. And uh, leg, leg pain, does this uh, uh, causes by um, what do you call this? Um, muscle myositis, pain, and everything. So the thinking process, much like that. Okay, but again, common thing is common. You should think of a uh, daily person in this case. Okay, very good. Simple. Any question? Both are quite quite uh, quite uh, straightforward. I just want you to know the uh, thinking process, lah. right? How do you uh, think uh, think around the symptoms? Okay, then uh, again, investigation. Before I forgot, uh, dengue. If patient presented with day two, three, four, five fever, then uh, request for dengue and this one. Do you have to request for the dengue antibody because antibody is not develop yet right so mm -hmm. come with day five day six fever then okay dia dah miss ada lima hari kat rumah hari kelima enam datang baru fever then it's okay to do the dengue uh, IgM IgG if you do too early uh, you will not have the uh, antibody uh, positive so dengue NS1 alone is adequate huh? so unless uh, after five or six days for example huh? or Unless the patient said that he has uh, had dengue before this, a uh, second dengue, and you want to do the uh, dengue serology, IgM, IgG. Those dengue NS1 for first time is uh, adequate. Okay. All right, any question? Quite clear, I think quite clear, very good. Just uh, then uh, again, uh, revise balik lah, you put your dengue fever. Uh, what is the warning sign? We in the exam, we not tell you what is dengue fever with warning sign and without warning sign. And the principle of management here, measurement is actually adequate fluids to the patient. If the patient have a low blood pressure, you give a additional fluids and uh, analgesia or paracetamol. So, yeah. so you, can tell you, you, you need to know the principle of management. We don't ask you in detail about the management, but you can tell the principle that then, for the patient pneumonia, the kidney, or principle management, which actually. If oxygen, uh, if paracetamol, if patient has poor or intake, I'm going to start the patient on IV drip. I'll consider start IV antibiotic for this patient. Patient oxygen is uh, dropping, very tachypneic, hypoxemic, then I consider oxygen. So that's what the third year punya, uh, assessment and of course it's going to tell you. We don't expect you to give detail apa nak. Tapi principle, right? Masyarakat senang je. 
Any question? Alright, that's very good. Okay, okay, quite good. So I think uh, we end up uh, this session. Huh? Let's leave it for us. So. Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.